Hey, what's going on? This is Matthew Fetcher from Audio Kit. What is up, fam? This is Matthew Fetcher, and today I'm going to show you some undocumented audio programming tips, namely how you can use AU Sampler and Logic EXS24 to make sample instruments and then play them back with AV Foundation or Audio Kit. We're going to show you how you can use control changes to do real time attack and release and map settings that way. It's super cool. If you want to follow along, you can go to the ROM player GitHub and download all the code in EXS files so you can follow along. Cool, let's get started. Okay, I'm in my ROM player directory. Come down here to sounds, sampler instruments. And you can see it comes with some EXS files. Then I've got the samples here in the samples directory. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here to make it easier to find. Now I'm going to come up here and go to EXS24. Now this is kind of confusing at first if you've never used EXS24. You can load EXS files directly by clicking on this edit button. So if you don't see the edit button, then you have to come down here to preferences. Uh, is it general or it's advanced and make sure this show advanced tools is checked okay then your edit button will appear come down to edit open I've got my sampler instruments here load this brass And if you don't see your velocity range, come down here to view velocity range and then you can see this one only has one velocity layer and it's mapped from uh, 0 to 127 here. Now one thing you can change visually is the actual velocity volume range. You can see it's a larger dynamic range. You can go really soft. Your EXS and AU presets can accept control channel changes. So we'll start with an attack and you want envelope 2 for the amp. Now let's do a source. The MIDI control channel for attack is I believe 73. So if we look at our MIDI control numbers, we could see that 73 is the attack and 72, I believe, is the release. So let's do 73 rounds to the attack. We'll give it a range between zero and it's like 10 seconds. Then we can do the same thing for release. We can map that to Seventy-two for release, and you can map any control to any destination. We come down here, and to save the excess, you go to Options, Save Instrument As. I'm coming back here to Sampler Instruments, and resaving this brass. And you can go through and do this with the rest of them. Okay, if you don't have Logic, there's other solutions. AK MIDI Sampler is actually built on AV Audio Unit Sampler, which means you can use AU presets in your code. If you don't want to spend the $200 for Logic, you can use AU Sampler, which is free with GarageBand. So we can load it up here. You can see you can build instruments visually here. It's kind of confusing. You start off with a sine wave. You need to delete that. There's a couple of online tutorials on how to build instruments with this that you can check out. There's an excellent blog post by Gene DeLisa who goes through how to do that, how to create a new document and access this and build your own presets here. And he's got a lot of other cool stuff here about MIDI and he is a friend of AudioKit and helps us out. So kudos to him. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and import an instrument here. We'll start with that brass we were working on. 
you can see we have this group here kind of already mapped. See the key mapping here, you can do that visually with AU Sampler. And then it has this button here, and you can see the envelopes we mapped, the release time and attack time. So you can do the same thing we did just now with logic. You can do this in AU Sampler, uh, you know, create a source. Oh, and look at this, it already has the control numbers listed for you, like attack time. We'll have that go to attack time. And then you can set a little uh, curve. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. And then you hit create, and then you've got one here. Uh, sometimes it just locks up like this. It's just amazingly uh, buggy. So use this at your own risk. Okay, so this just crashed. Beautiful. Let's bring this back up. And so this also has a key velocity curve. And just like we did before, we can change this to 30. And that should, and that should give us a range for your actual volume of your keys. So that's one way you can do this visually here, if you're willing to fight with AU Sampler. And then you can create AU presets, which you can load. You can load these without using Audio Kit, or you can load them with a ROM player. Okay, here's a quick example with the ROM player code. I'm gonna add an AU preset loader here, real fast, so you can see. Um, something like... And in this case, perhaps I had a preset called harp.au preset, loaded this in my sampler instruments folder, just like these ESX files, and I could load that. Instead of load EXS24, you would load that .au preset similar to this. Okay, and AudioKit also has an excellent AKAU preset builder uh, written by Jeff Cooper. If you actually open up AudioKit, you can see his source code on how he's building AU presets if you want to get in at a lower level. So that's really cool. And once you build your AU presets via code, with just one line here, you can actually then load them into the AU sampler and edit them some more, resave them, or use them however you want. So there's a combination of making things with code and with visual tools. And you don't need uh, AudioCAD to do any of this. This is something that comes with AV Foundation. Though the AK MIDI sampler and Jeff's preset builder do make it a lot easier, so you may want to check it out. Okay, finally let's dive into some code and hook all this up. I've already made these changes in the AudioKit Roam Player GitHub, so you can follow along with the code here. First, I added an attack and release knob. Now let's go to the code part of this. This is a MIDI range, so I set it from 0 to 127, so I set each knob, and I just gave it an initial start. And then the actual code, I have the CC to send, and remember we set it up 73 for the attack, and so I just send this to the sampler, and I have the release doing the same thing. And so this code, what it's doing, it's in the conductor here. First of all, we're just uh, doing some safety checks, making sure it's not below zero and converting it to an unsigned integer. And then this is the magic code right here. This means that it's a control change. And one, this is a channel. You might wanna change this to an actual uh, variable instead of a magic number here. And it just sends that status. So we're basically, anytime someone changes the knob, we are saying, hey, we're sending a 73 with this value to the sampler. 
And since it's already mapped in our EXS file, it should change. So let's test it out. Perfect. Oh, that's great. So there you have it. We're mapping the MIDI control changes within EXS24 or AU Sampler, and then we're simply sending those control changes to the instrument directly. Here's another gotcha. So we already updated this TX Brass instrument. But when I come back here, these things that did look like this are now a triangle, and it looks different. So we have to come back here and change this again and resave it. Um, I'm not an expert on logic and I don't know why it does that. If someone wants to leave a comment on what's happening here, um, <laughs> I think we'd all appreciate knowing what's going on. So sometimes it helps to come back and recheck your instruments to make sure that they did actually take properly. And resave them here. Well, hopefully that gets you started. I know this is a lot to take in. You can learn more about getting started with AudioKit at AudioKitPro.com. I'll see you soon. This has been Matthew Fetcher. Thanks for watching.